Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to The Money Factor here on The Sphere. My name is LaShonda Johnson, certified financial educator and also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance. So welcome back, everyone. And today we have a very good show lined up for you as usual. I shouldn't say good. I should say awesome. <laughs> and uh, today I have a guest hostess with me who I'm very excited to be able to bring to you guys. I know that we've talked about a few topics uh, regarding real estate before um but today we're going to dig into some stuff because we have some things going on in our country right now that have have occurred um we're talking about credit breaches we're talking about different things uh, hurricanes have hit and so we want to be able to help you today to be able to understand how to navigate through the home buying process uh in the midst of these things so i want to welcome my guest to you uh she is with keller williams uh real estate uh, firm and uh, you know, a little spunky. I, I love her. I mean, mm -hmm. I just love, I just love her feel. I love her look, and uh, I want her to introduce uh, herself to you, uh, and, and also to pronounce her last name correctly because I know her name is Sandra, but <laughs> but Sandra's last name is a little bit challenging, and I don't want to chop it up, so I just call her Sandra. But anyway, good morning, Sandra. Good morning, LaShonda. It's great to see you. <laughs> um, my name is Sandra Schrank. I'm with Keller Williams Metropolitan over by the Galleria area. And I am a realtor and uh, I work with all the different uh, sides of the home buying process. And I can uh, be able to situate you through going through different uh, data and features and uh, all the different uh, aspects that uh, the transaction process uh, takes through yes. going through with real estate. Absolutely. And so um, when it comes to money and how money works, um, you know, this is a process that everybody needs to understand because uh, typically there's there's three things major in our lives that we're going to we're going to purchase. And that's an education, mm -hmm. uh, a home and a vehicle. These are, you know, and, and outside of those things, you know, businesses and things like that. But these are common things that we have to be able to understand the process for. And so I'm very excited to be able to announced to you guys that you know we're, we're f forming co collaborations for people to be able to help you navigate through some of the intricacies of life that we just don't have the knowledge in yes of course um it's very good for people to educate themselves and to be familiar with their process so they're aware of uh, all these different factors that come into play when they're looking to make maneuvers in their life in order to better themselves. Absolutely, it's very important. So speaking of bettering ourselves, we want to get into the news. Uh, you know, this article, when I read it, I thought, you know, this is true, okay? So we all know that Equifax, we, in fact, we even did a show about Equifax's breach and what you need to do. But this article suggests what Congress should do or can do to help you know and, and before we get into the, to the article i just want to say that you know something as big as a breach on equifax something that mm -hmm. holds our you know our, our life's history uh and, and again i won't belabor this because we've talked about it before but you would think congress would get involved in that process uh yes definitely i know that there are different uh 
sides of uh, life that you go through that uh, are worrisome and uh, you want to make sure that you are safe and protected and updated and uh, there are other people that are looking out for you as well. Um, know that there are different alert systems that uh, are in place and uh, and people can be able to uh, target exactly uh, where they need to uh, focus on in order to keep other people safe. So luckily there are other people that are looking out for um, for us and uh, for the general public and um, for one another and all the different systems that are in place that are able to protect others. Yes. And so looking at this article, when uh, you know, when they're suggesting some things that Congress should do, when I read it, I was like, yeah, they could do that. Yeah, they could do that. Yeah, they, sh- they really have the power to do that. They could do that. So let's take a look at the article. Um, you can definitely go back to the sphere.tv and these articles are provided to you. So this is coming to us from CNN Money. And it says, after members of Congress grilled former Equifax CEO Richard Smith at four hearings this week, one thing is clear. There is an outrage on both sides of the of the aisle over the massive data breach. It's massive. And you cannot you cannot act like this thing is not happening. Uh, but what will they do about it? That's a question. You know, and, and I think as as um consumers uh, in our country, knowing that this is this is this is the this is the, the form in which we trust information to be stored mm-hmm. and distributed to people who we expect to receive credit from. What is what, what are you going to do about that? You know, how do we ensure that that doesn't happen again? I think uh, nowadays that we have technology just that is rapid and uh, that uh, everything moves at such a quick pace that uh, you have to be up to date with all of your accounts and make sure that you are constantly checking on uh, any type of maneuvers that you have made and uh, especially that if you have anything, anybody else is making too on, exactly, your, on your behalf. That <laughs> anyone might be making on your behalf. Exactly. Make sure that everything is working properly in your uh, favor. Absolutely. So let's take a look at the article and see what the article, what else the article has to say. So it says the three major credit rating agencies, Equifax, Experian, and the TransUnion, aren't going away. We know that. They are an integral part of the U.S. credit system, and it would be difficult for consumers to get a mortgage loan or even a credit card without them some democracy uh, um, some democrats are calling for a total overhaul of the industry because the credit rating agencies don't currently have an economic incentive to help protect consumers data they really don't if you think Mm -hmm. about it equifax won't be losing any business as a result of its failures and that's because those consumers aren't actually your customers. They're providing a service to us, but there there is no monetary value in exchange for the service that they provide to us. They're your product. Senator Al Franken told Smith during a hearing Wednesday, each of the three agencies have credit reports almost, um, if not all, American consumers, and they, and they sell that data. You want to go up a little bit? And so they sell that data to um, to vendors. Mm-hmm. And so and that's the part that's kind of disturbing because you're selling the information to vendors. But I can't even ensure that the information that you have on me is accurate, accurate. And that information is portraying an image of me personally. Yes, exactly. It's very personal. Mm -hmm. Um, Everything that comes into play is uh, interactive. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these different people uh, have their life uh, laid out. And uh, all this data (laughs) is uh, compiled uh, in regards to uh, everything that's happened to them. So it's uh, very important to review all of uh, your documents and uh, make sure that uh, you haven't been affected and uh, make sure that other people... um, uh, well, uh, make sure that uh, society is aware that uh, there are things that happen from time to time, but this was uh, a specific event uh, that was um, um, out of place, and uh, hopefully uh, things like this will uh, be tracked uh, more efficiently and that uh, other people will be protected Speaking through the system. Speaking of overhaul, I, I think that, yes, absolutely, we need an overhaul. I mean, the system is antiquated, and again, you know, we could talk for hours about how we feel about this because personally I was affected. I checked and it's like, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. you're in that number. And that's a large number. We're talking about, you know, in the millions or some millions. And so still, you know, it's hard not to be in that number. 
it's still okay so now what happens to me personally what are you guys going to do to make sure that i am not violated through this technical breach so let's go back to the article and let's start looking at some of the things that is suggested that Cong congress should do number one make credit freezes free putting a freeze on your credit report is the best way to stop fraudulent accounts from being opened in your name but the cost most consumer but this costs most consumers money and a patchwork of state laws dictate how they work and how much they cost fees typically range between two dollars and ten dollars and if you have to lift the freeze if you want to open a line of credit uh, often triggering another fee mm -hmm. so it creates an inconvenience for us and we're paying for the inconvenience we're paying for the inconvenience exactly that was then now you know placed on us because of what I say is just, you know, a tear down and security on their behalf that someone was able to hack through that system. So, okay, give it to us for free. Why mm -hmm. not? There are uh, ways to be alerted within your account and uh, all of your different uh, um, accounts that are in place. And uh, hopefully uh, there will be a uh, better uh, alert system so that people will be aware of what's going on but at the same time we've got to be uh, just constant with the technology mm -hmm. and uh, with the uh, everything that is running so that uh, you are uh, secure yes and so that yes, others absolutely. aren't uh, prying through uh, all of your business <laughs> <laughs> i like the way you say prying through all of your business yeah in this case i don't you know you don't want people all in your business you know, mm -hmm. you give people permission to be in your business when you give them permission to run your credit. Mm -hmm. But I mean, whoever had, I mean, whoever did this, who was the mastermind of this, they're in a lot of people's business, I have to say. So um, we're at that moment in the show that we want to uh, tell you guys about our fabulous sponsor. One of them, we have several. And so uh, we're going to start off with Elite Dental Wellness. So this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness at Elite Dental Wellness. Our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and lifetime and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Pratis and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness at 713-789-8680. This is where we go, ding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to keep your grill shining bright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's get back to the article. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Now, going on to number two, simplify the freezing process because they don't make it easy, okay? The process currently varies by state. Sometimes consumers can do it online or over the phone, but then others may have to send it to, to uh, send in verifying documents through the mail. But a few federal laws could, you know, create a standard process that requires the credit rating agencies to, to comply with your request quickly. Mm -hmm. So, again, one of the points that we had in one of our former... Uh, shows is that we stated that you know there should be an alert to let us know that we've been breached because this thing took place and and, and it took you know a couple of weeks or days before they even alerted us in mm -hmm. fact they even knew back in july i think some of the articles stated that this was happening but we didn't find out until recently so we need to have an alert on the alert yes exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, there are so many different things that uh, can occur right now that uh, will be able to benefit a lot of different people that uh, um, are uh, stabilizing themselves throughout their lives, but uh, everyone does have a line of credit. So uh, this is something that is common throughout uh, all of us. So um, we might as well uh, make sure that uh, everything is running efficiently so that people can be able to operate within their lives through uh, the various different means and uh, sorts of things that uh, make it a uh, and not be forced a little to pay for to the live. inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's it's whenever things are off track or off kilter. Yes, it is. It it does cause some inconvenience, but when we have to pay for that inconvenience, 
that is the thing that becomes very challenging because it makes you unhappy. I mean, you're already unhappy that you've been violated, mm -hmm. but then now you have to now be inconvenienced through that violation. It's just not fair. So let's go on to the article and see uh, number three. You want to read that one, Sandra? Sure. Uh, give customers unlimited access to credit reports. A mm -hmm. credit report should show someone if someone is here, a credit report should show if someone has opened a new credit card account or loan in your name. Not all lenders report information to all three agencies, though. So, so experts suggest reviewing all three. Which is what you've been saying here for the mm -hmm. last, you know, few minutes is you've got to review your report. So I, I want to urge those of you who are listening to us or watching us, make sure that you take a proactive approach in monitoring your credit. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you have good credit or bad credit. It's not always about the credit. It's all, it's about the identity behind the credit. And so some people don't care to open up things in your name for credit purposes, but they want to take your identity and be able to do things with your identity as to evade themselves. So make sure that you have mm -hmm. some type of tracking system in place to be able to monitor them. One, is, one of them is uh, Credit Karma. It's free. Mm -hmm. You can download that. You can see where your your score is. Those three agencies that provide you free credit reports, you also want to be able to to take a look at those things and request your credit report. If you feel something sneaky is going on, you know, put the alerts on your on your phone. You know, do the freeze if you feel like, man, I I just want to shut this whole thing down until it kind of blows over. You can you can initiate the freeze. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So You're let's right. go on to. Uh, the next one in the article. So number four, change the dispute process. If your identity is stolen, it can be cumbersome process to, cor to correct your credit report. Consumers must contact each credit rating agency to prove the information is wrong and sometimes seek legal help. And the, the Comprehensive Consumer Credit Reporting Reform Act introduced by Representative Maxine Walters would change the system so that the burden to prove whether something is accurate shifts from the consumer to the credit reporting agency by the i like that because you're the one reporting these things on mm -hmm. me so uh, you know it's kind of like in the courtroom you know the the defense is the one that has the burden of proof mm -hmm. and so in our case you've reported these things on me so you prove that what you have on your records is correct so it's going to be very interesting to see if those things fall out like that so let's go back to the article number five sandra Allow customers to opt out of Equifax. Customers currently have no choice. Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion have their personal information, which they like it, whether, whether they, they like, like it or it. not. On one hand, it could hurt consumers if they pull out of the credit rating system. Credit, report, credit reports make it easier for banks to decide to lend to us. But some members of Congress suggested that customers show at least, should at least be given the option to have their data stored by the other two rating agencies only. Yes, I think that um, this whole breach is really going to cause some serious changes, and, and it's going to for it's forcing an overhaul. And so, um, if you're watching us, we're at the point in the show right now that we need you to go to the Spear and subscribe if you have not done so already so facebook live unfortunately is only 15 minutes it's fortunate that you get to watch it but it's 15 minutes and to watch the show in its entirety after it's completed you have to subscribe to the sphere okay so go there right now while you're there we would like for you to write a review there's a place there for you to write a review we want to know what you think what you like what you'd like to see and also, we provide this show to you completely complimentary, but there is a way for you to give back, and you can do that through the Donate button. On the Donate button, you can donate one time, or you can become a patron who donates consistently, and you determine what consistently is. But we would love to have it. We would love to have your financial support if that's something that you would like to do. And we would like for you also to share the show. We want to be able to reach the masses which are with our message and help uh, you know, people all across the globe. So we need you to share the show. So again, the show is not ending, but you do need to subscribe and also make sure you come back to see the rest of the show in its, in its entirety. Okay. Yes, definitely. So yes, absolutely. So let's go back to the article. And uh, so I think we're on number five. Uh, or number, number five. Six. Okay. Number six. 
Replace social security numbers. Now, this is a big, big deal. <laughs> People, are, you know, this is a big deal. After other breaches like the one uh, at Yahoo, changing your password may be all you need to do to protect yourself. But the Equifax hack exposed social security numbers. This is a big deal, mm -hmm. which stay with you forever. Yes. You know, it is, it's, it's like your, your barcode, you know. Uh, Smith told con Congress it should consider creating a new way to verify identity. But when we asked during a hearing Wednesday what the replacement could be, Smith said he did not know. You know, they don't have the answers. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't have the answers. And I think, again, this breach is going to force an overhaul, an overhaul of the system and, you know, credit reporting as we know it. And it's time. It's, it, it really is time. It is time. I think that uh, people are very uh, conscious that uh, technology is rapid at this time and uh, things need to be uh, situated correctly so that everyone is secure and uh, everyone needs to uh, know exactly what's going on with themselves and uh, make sure that the proper businesses and everyone that's associated with your life is uh, incorporated the act, with They're getting it, the accurate so. information also. Exactly, that everything is accurate. Yes, it's only fair. It's only fair to, to say that and when, um, as as a, a company who has as, a huge of a responsibility as Equifax, and I'm just not saying Equifax, but also TransUnion and, and um, Experian, they have a huge responsibility to millions of people. And so when that uh, trust is violated, because we do trust the system, it's the system that we have here in the U.S., but when that trust is violated, then there has to be uh, a really, uh, really a real serious look at the process and processes need to change to prevent these things. But while you're changing the processes, let's look at the processes mm -hmm. and see, are these, you know, could we do some things better so that not only we protect the consumer, but we also work in the consumer's behalf. Yes, exactly. And so, so with that, we want to go on to the next article because this is, this is pretty, um, this is a question that I know many, many people have, especially those of us who have not yet purchased a home yet. Why the Equifax breach might make it harder to buy a home and what you can do. And so this is where obviously Sandra's expertise comes in because we know you can't buy a home without the credit rating system. Exactly. Uh, a lot of things are in place currently uh, to be able to uh, help uh, individuals to be able to find a, a proper uh, place of living. And uh, I know that uh, getting into a a real estate uh, market that um, is uh, always changing is uh, is something that a lot of people are wanting to uh, be a part of and to be able to buy their first home or be able to buy another property and um, to be able to know that uh, they're getting in the right situation and that they are protected going into it. And um, there are so many different situations that can arise with uh, so much data and uh, it's such a big uh, transaction that is in place. Yes, I mean, you have to have something in place to be able to understand a person's character. And so our credit rating system is the thing that helps us to determine character, character based on habits, mm -hmm. repayment character. And so that's contained in the credit rating system because when you, as a realtor, when you meet a person for the first time and they tell you they're interested in buying a home, I mean, you don't know, you don't have history on that person. The mm -hmm. history is the credit report. So you can draw some conclusions or make some decisions as a lender um, or also as um, uh, as a buyer. Buyers also, you know, they're looking at the condition of the home. Their system is, you know, the, the, um, the uh, what do you call the inspection? Mm -hmm. So that's like the home's credit report, you know. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when you're talking about, myself you're meeting me for the first time and as a realtor you you meet a lot of people in the mm -hmm. course of a month who are interested in buying a home and you cannot make a decision on their character without looking at credit well uh for me honestly i i scan uh, to uh, just to uh, see uh, what exactly is going on in the individual's life so i can be able to help them and uh, to be able to get them situated properly. And there are different lenders out there that be able to assist you and be able to help you through this time. And uh, since it is a, the, that was a well-known breach and everything, uh, people are uh, aware of it. And uh, I know that there are different uh, other situations that can arise, but uh, it is something that is uh, 
going to be uh, beneficial for people just to be uh, conscious of their own uh, reports and everything like that. But at the same time, all these different lenders can be able to situate you just correctly so we can see exactly what type of home you could get into. Yes. So we're at that portion in the show for our next sponsor. And uh, this one happens to be my favorite. <laughs> and that is the sphere. Okay. So are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. So those of you who are watching us, you probably, you know, see that the background is different. Things are different. Well, this is um, the inaugural uh, podcast, so so we have an official uh, studio, brand new studio. So I'm so excited and so proud of uh, our um, our director and our producer and our you know man, the visionary, uh, Mr. Gary Lee, for you know having the insight to bring the spirit to you guys, but also now to you know have he's taken it to a, a whole nother level. So you definitely want to make sure that you contact the spirit to get involved and get your products advertised here because a lot of incredible things are going to be happening. So congratulations to the spirit. I'm just Wonderful. proud to be the first official, <laughs> the fur, the money factors, the first official uh, podcast in the, the new uh, uh, spear studio. So I, I'm very excited about it. I'm so, honored to be a part of it. Thank yes. You. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So now let's, let's get back to, the article and let's look at some of the things that you need to consider okay for years security experts have um, feared the big one this is the big one no terrorist incidents bombs or hurricanes their warning has been centered on cyber attacks and now one of the largest and potentially most damaging data breaches ever has occurred at the credit reporting uh, company Equifax so the company revealed that the personal information about 143 affected about 143 million consumers, possibly including social security numbers, addresses, and even credit card numbers, was stolen. Stolen. This is a big theft, man. The scale of this breach is hard to over um, is hard to overestimate. It could ultimately affect more than half of the adult population of the United States. Wow. So I'm saying to think that you would be excluded from this. Uh, I don't think so. So what will the impact be? And how might all of that illegal obtained information info be, uh, be, be misused? The short answer is that no one knows because we don't know the mind of the person that hacked and what they intend to do with it and what their motives are. But the theft has all sorts of repercussions for those trying to get a new credit card, pass a security check for a new job, or devastating of all, get a mortgage. Yes, This exactly. is the biggest effect. So, and with people's information floating around, perhaps even being sold at this very moment on the dark web, the, um, the reap, I can't see it. <laughs> the repercussions could uh, haunt them for years, possibly decades. Wow. So let's go on to see what else uh, that article has to say. I mean, just that phrase alone, it gives you kind of palpable. It gives you anxiety. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll get everything situated uh, soon so that uh, people won't uh, be grieving and they'll find some relief. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> let's, see how, <laughs> let's see if that's going to be the case. So the biggest fear center around identity theft on the epic scale. It, it, uh, it isn't tough to conjure up worst case scenarios. OK, you, we could come up with a, a million of those. Think about it. Bad guys, all of all of someone's information kit at least theoretically try to uh, try to buy a home under the person's name what if somebody did that i mean that's tragic uh it's more likely though they would be used uh they would they would use those stolen credit card numbers or use social security numbers to open up new credit lines and rack up lots of debts in the unsuspecting victim's name 
and that damage could make it much harder for someone to qualify for a mortgage. As I was saying earlier, you know, mortgage companies, they don't know who you are. They mm-hmm. have to look at your credit report to draw an assumption of who you are and draw an assumption of your character and your behavior with, with money and your repayment history. So, um, man, it, it, that's a sticky situation. Mm-hmm. So I know as a realtor, you're going to have to deal with this issue more so than me. I mean, I'm not a realtor. So, I mean, what allowances or, 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 or what concessions are you making for people? Are you asking people in the initial process when they're looking to purchase a, a home, are you asking them if, they was, if they've checked their credit or if they validated their credit report? Is that something that you're going to ask people to do? Well, uh, you can uh, definitely have your credit checked before you are uh, working with any type of lender to be approved, uh, pre-approved, honestly going into a situation to know how much of a home you can buy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a a very good idea to be pre-approved so that uh, you are looking within your target range and uh, you're aware of all the uh, information that uh, comes into play with uh, your finances and uh, everything like that so that you're not surprised. Exactly, and so that's where uh, we come to the point of the show where we talk about definitely being able to get educated, making sure that you participate in our national campaign for financial literacy, come to the workshops, understand money, understand this process. But the most important thing is to sit down and have a financial needs analysis or personal financial strategy. One of the one of the things that are situated there in the goal section is home ownership. And so most people who are looking to purchase a home for the first time, and we're going to go over some of that today here in the show, is talking about the steps and things you need to consider. And we're also going to be doing a home buyer's workshop that's going to take place on November the 11th. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're excited about that. So definitely you need to follow us on the Houston Housewives of Finance official if it doesn't say official it's not us but make sure you go like the page share the page and look up for upcoming events uh and especially this one on november the 11th where we're going to literally have the home buying uh, process there for you from the real estate perspective from the financial perspective from the lending perspective from the closing perspective so we're going to have all of that available to you to participate in especially if you're a new home buyer but maybe you're not a new home buyer and you want to sell or you still need to better understand the process this is going to be a workshop that you want to participate in and so now um going uh, back to the article let's go back to the article what you need to do or what you need to what you need to do now to protect yourself there's one primary thing you need to do to protect yourself and your finances and your need to do it and you need to do it now <laughs> first check and see if you were in fact affected by equifax now the number is there um the number is 800-349-9960 so, or you can do it online at trust, um, uh, trust, whatever that is. I can't see that completely, but the link is there for you to go. I just went to Equifax.com and they mm-hmm. had something there for you to be able to do it. If you haven't been affected, mortgage and credit ex- experts suggest you should contact each of the big credit reporting agencies immediately to freeze your credit so that no, mm-hmm. nothing malicious can take place. Mm-hmm. And so if you have the intent to buy, and you weren't affected, freeze it, put a freeze on it. So nobody can take your information and do things uh, maliciously with it, which would interfere with your home buying process. Yes, definitely. Uh, There are ways to prepare in order to uh, go into the home buying process so that uh, you uh, are comfortable with it. There's a lot of different steps that come into play and a lot of different people along the way um, that... uh, are uh, going to be interactive uh, with uh, all of the different uh, choices that uh, you need to make. And uh, it's good to uh, always be um, uh, familiar with uh, all of these different uh, aspects so that uh, uh, when it comes time to uh, purchase and uh, get invested into real estate, uh, that uh, everything is going to be uh, uh, prepared. Yeah, you, you, you want to make sure that like it's saying, if, if you know you're going to buy, and, and so even in our last, uh, one of the last episodes we did talking about this, we talked about the market that's affected the most is the millennials, because a lot of them have not yet purchased their home. Mm-hmm. 
Now for, you know, Generation Xers and Baby Boomers, these are people who are, you know, you're in your home and you may not have a plan to buy another home. Um, so these things are not so prevalent for you, but for a person who has not purchased. Oh, yeah. You need to make sure if you're listening or you're watching us, definitely you need to make sure that you get actively. And it says now it didn't say wait till next week. This breach has been announced some weeks back. So if you have not taken the steps to make that phone call or go online to check and see where you stand, then you need to do that today. You know, have a sense of urgency about this because it is urgent. Like I said, this thing can carry the, these the things that can be done with your name can be, you know, follow you for decades. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that you're proactive in this process. So let's go back to yes. the article and see what it has to say. So you want to pick up from there, Sandra? Sure. There are no downsides to this. You can still use your credit cards with the freezes on, but no one will be able to check the credit scores and personal information without your permission. So no bad apples can open up fraudulent new cards or get loans under your name. Mm -hmm. And you can undo the freezes at any time, typically for a small fee. Of course, they're, of course, mm -hmm. of course. There's a small fee. It's thing. always something with something. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, we got to pay for you to unfreeze my account when I was frozen because anyway, you know, you guys, you know how I feel about that. I mean, really? Why can't we just have that service for free? You know, at mm. least since we've been violated. But anywho, I don't I don't make the laws. I, I just abide by them. Let's go back to the of article. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you can continue. It might be worth it might be worth signing up for a credit monitoring service. He says it's certainly easier to undo a fraudulent account within a few days and to wait a few months to address multiple new lines of credit. Identity theft expert Douglas expects there will be an uptick in fraudulent mortgage and refinance mm. refinance applications as a result of the Equifax breach. This could mean loan officers might have to use additional vetting procedures to ensure applications to ensure applicants who are who they say they are mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. and uh, they could potentially slow down how long it takes to get a loan and even cost consumers more but it's too early to know the true repercussions of this massive cybersecurity breakdown yes so i mean as a realtor then you're going to have to be really um extend some compassion to you, to the buyer because, you know, when, when you want to buy a home, you want that process to, small, to, to, um, to, to go smoothly. And also, but you're anxious too. You know, you have to deal with the fact that people, when they're ready to buy a home, they're excited about it. There's, you know, there's also the anxiety about it, the unknown. And that's, again, mm -hmm. why we want to do the workshop so you can be aware of how to navigate through this process. But... Also understanding, too, that you, you know, you do have rights and we're talking about all the negative things around this situation, but you do have rights and you can get involved to make sure that um, you can turn a bad situation into something good for yourself. So if you weren't a person that had the behaviors of watching your credit prior now, I mean, maybe that's the person that you will become mm -hmm. because of this breach. Yes, uh, you can uh, get yourself organized to some extent to be able to uh, speak with the realtor and uh, be able to know your current situation and they can align you with the loan, uh, uh, with the lender uh, to be able to know exactly how much home that uh, you can afford. You can afford, yes. And, uh, know that in advance. Exactly. And uh, just know exactly what you're working with so that the process will go a lot smoother. And uh, if anything, uh, you can ask your realtor all the different uh, questions you have about the different uh, areas that you're researching. Um, they have a little bit uh, more access to information about uh, these areas and they're familiar with it because absolutely um, use um, basically example, what you're saying is doing use this, your so. resources. Exactly. Use, use your, your resources. resources. Uh, you know, let the experts help you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course we're going to dive in that a little bit more, but we're at the point in the show that we have to now talk about our last sponsor which happens to be a dope one. <laughs> okay. And that is KOG and company. Okay. 
So are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. I love it. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop Dope Gear at KOGPassion.com. That's K-O-G-Passion.com. And use your coupon code DOPE, that's D-O-P-E, for 10% off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness apparel. So act now, sizes are selling out fast. So Unleash Your Dopeness. There you go. All right, yes. And so speaking of dopeness, I mean, to buy a home is dope. That's that's the American dream. People want to do that. That's something that everybody aspires to do. And some people, they, you know, they're, they're not economically where they want to be. So they buy their first, first home and they call it their starter home. And then they have this, you know, my dream home is yet to be purchased. So if that's you, then again, this is applicable to you. This is definitely applicable to you. So buying a home. Uh, like like uh, the elite dental wellness said, it can be daunting and scary if you've never done it before. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what assurance can can you give our listeners and our viewers that this process is not as tedious or a- as daunting as it appears to be? See, all these people that uh, come to play with the uh, interactions of real estate are uh, honestly uh, very well organized, very kind professionals. And uh, they'll be able to assist you with uh, the uh, home buying process. And um, it's important to know that uh, these people can uh, negotiate on your behalf and look out for you. And uh, they'll know other things to look for that you may not be aware of. And uh, they can be able to uh, narrow down your options so that you'll be uh, familiar with uh, what exactly you're getting into. Yes. So please tell our listeners and viewers how to reach you, where you're at, where you're located, because... You know, I, I like that she's talking in general terms, but please, no mistake about it, she is a realtor and she can help you. <laughs> yes, exactly. So please give us your contact information, Sandra. Um, my contact information, let's see, I am uh, located in the Galleria area, and uh, but I travel all throughout town. I'm a native Houstonian, and um, my cell phone number is 713-410-4049. Um, you can contact me anytime, um, and uh, I'll be able to uh, walk you through uh, any different processes uh, that uh, you're thinking of, and or if anything, I can help direct you to the uh, proper people so yes, that you can get yes, situated. Absolutely. And your email address? My email address is s l s c h r e n k at gmail dot com. Absolutely. Okay. So um, yes. So uh, Sandra is a licensed a licensed real estate professional. So she would be able to assist you with your real estate needs. You'll be able to see more of her. She wants to, you know, definitely collaborate with us to help you, our our viewers. Yes, and so um, I, I'm pretty much uh, excited about what that's going to look like. And, and when you think about the concept of money, you know, it sits kind of in the middle of everything and all other processes float around it and flow through it. So when it comes to purchasing a home, we know that some people want to do it, um, but they're intimidated by the process. And so speaking of that, we wanna go on to the next article because this article talks about uh, buying a home, buying a home in 10 steps. Okay, wonderful. And so Sandra, you wanna start us off with that one? Sure. What's number one? Uh, Number one is uh, start with your credit. Credit reports, talking about exactly, here we go. <laughs> credit reports are kept by the three major credit agencies, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. They show whether you are habitually late with payments and whether you have to run into serious, whether you have run into serious credit problems in the past. Yes, yeah, so that's what we've been talking about this morning. Um, I don't know how you can go through the home buying process without having your credit checked. It has to be done because, again, they want to see your repayment history. They want to see Mm -hmm. your character with money. And that's where the report has to be able to give them an idea of that. And so the validity of that report is very, very important Mm -hmm. because then people are making judgment calls on whether they're going to lend you money, how much interest they're going to charge you based on the contents of that report. So let's go on to number two. Set your budget. 
Next, you need to determine how much house you can afford. So start with an online calculator. For more accurate, for more accurate figure, ask to be pre-approved by a lender. Just said that. Which yes. is what I've been uh, <laughs> speaking of, and um, who will um, they'll be able to look into your income, debt, and credit to determine the kind of loan that uh, is in your league. Yes, absolutely. So I want to say with that. Um, that's where I come in, you know, having a personal financial strategy myself and those of us here at the Houston Housewives of Finance. We want to sit down with you and have a uh, do a personal needs analysis with you or personal financial strategy, whichever one you want to call it. But before you go see a person like Sandra, uh, you need to have your ducks in a row. You need to know if uh, your life will constitute you buying that home. So a lot of us want to buy a home. But really, our financials do not present an opportunity for us to do so, or our financials do represent an opportunity for us to do so. Either way, you need to be able to look in that first before going into that process and make sure you do a personal financial strategy. I mm -hmm. mean, how, how easy would that make life for you as a realtor if people came to you already and they had those things already in order? You wouldn't have to send them back because if, if, yeah. if that's the case, you have to send them back, right? There's uh, always going to be a process to go through, so make sure that uh, you are as organized as possible to help your realtor to be able to go through uh, uh, buying a home a lot quicker. And uh, that way, if you do find a home, then uh, you'd be able to uh, you'd be ready to be able to uh, make an offer and to uh, be fully prepared. Some uh, uh, different individuals do request uh, that uh, you have a pre-approval ready. Uh, pre-approval letter ready with your offer and everything like that so there are different situations that uh, arise where uh, you will need to uh, already uh, be prepared so just get organized early and it's a it's a lot easier to you, you, uh, deal with yes, all these different situations absolutely absolutely and and uh the the the, the process of getting um approved pre-approved makes life so much easier mm -hmm. as well and and so again when when you sit down with a, a financial professional like myself the question is going to be how much home do you want to buy and so that question is already brought up before you even reach a realtor or a lender so if you sit down and determine that you know my budget will constitute or maybe you don't even understand what your budget will allow you to buy and that's where a financial professional comes in looking mm -hmm. at your budget and and you have the dream of I want to buy a half a million dollar home and we can look at your financials and say listen this is more feasible based on your income what you can do and so having that that third party that professional because I want to say that mm -hmm. it needs to be a professional a qualified person to be able to have that conversation and help you to build your foundation uh, going into that process it is is what you really need to do so that conversation would have already been open before going to a realtor. So you go to them, hey, listen, I know, Sandra, that I want to buy a $200,000 home. That's my budget. I know that's my budget because I've already sat down and done a personal financial strategy. I already have a goal setting. I've done these things before even coming to mm -hmm. you. So I know how much house I want to buy. And guess what? I also know how much I'm going to need in the down payment process. I've been preparing and saving for this. And so if people came to you that way, that would make the process a whole lot easier. That would be wonderful. It would uh, help everything to go uh, through a lot more smoothly and uh, that it would be a quicker process to be able to uh, be ready to purchase a home. Say you uh, happen to find a home right away and uh, maybe that's the one that you want no matter what. So uh, just make sure that uh, you're as prepared as, uh, as much as you can be. And if you're not quite sure what to do to be call prepared, a professional, then you, you can guys. <laughs> go ahead and call me or you yes. can call another realtor and uh, they can be able to uh, help you to get situated so that you'll be comfortable for the process. Absolutely. So let's go back to the article. Now, number three, line up cash. You'll need to come up with some cash. That's why I'm saying you've got to come up with some cash. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't know very many people that walked into the process with zero out-of-pocket expense. Um, however, it says you will need to line up some cash for your down payment and closing costs. Lenders like to see 20% of the home price as a down payment. And I want to say that's general what we do mm -hmm. when we're doing our strategies is we encourage people to have 20% 
uh, as a down payment. If you can put down more than that, the lender may be willing to approve a larger loan. If you have less, you'll need to find loans that accommodate you. So various private and public agencies, including Fannie Mae, Fr uh, Freddie Mac, and the Federal Housing Administration, and the Department of Veteran Affairs provide low down payment mortgages through banks and mortgage companies. If you qualify, if you qualify, it's possible to pay as little as 3% up front. So, and here it says a warning. With the down payment of under 20%, you will probably wind up having to pay for private mortgage insurance, a safety net protecting the bank in case you fail to make payments. So that's PMI adds about 0.5% of the total loan amount to your mortgage payments for the year. So once you've considered the down payment, make sure you've gotten enough to cover fees and closing costs. That is why it's essential that you sit down and have a personal financial strategies. This may include the appraisal fee, loan fees, attorney fees, inspection fees. And see, these are things people don't consider, all of these fees. And so being a, a financial professional, we don't know all of the fees. That's why we're collaborating with lenders and realtors so they can help educate you on this process and we can work with you on the aspects of your personal financial strategy to accommodate the cash that's going to be required to do these things. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, most of the time there will be money that will need to be put into uh, escrow uh, with the uh, title company to be able to uh, get started. And uh, usually it's uh, about a 1%. Uh, and uh, there's an option fee as well uh, going into the situation to uh, be able to uh, think over if uh, that home will be right for you. Um, along with these uh, different other things uh, before closing, there are inspections and uh, and uh, appraisal fees as well. Uh, and if some you, of if these you, things you, are negotiable, but yes. uh, a lot of times you just you need to be prepared yeah. uh, to be able to pay into uh, all these different uh, factors. And, and so that's the importance of having this workshop that we're going to have on the 11th, is so you can be aware. Uh, you have to get educated on this process so you be, you can be aware of what to prepare for. So if you just said, oh, wow, I want to buy a $200,000 home and I've got 10% down and then you walk in, okay, I got to pay for this. I got to pay for this. Oh, this is, uh, I'm supposed to pay for the inspection. Uh, I'm supposed to do this. So you're aware of the thing. So I, I'm really, uh, you know, Sandra's provided an awesome checklist that we're going to go over in this workshop. Um, and also we have some lenders that are going to come in, some title companies that are going to come in and talk to you, have these conversations. So you understand the entire process and what it takes to be a homeowner. Yes, And definitely. so that's going to be pretty exciting. So I'm excited about that. November the 11th. So make sure you save that date. And we're going to have information out to you very soon. If you follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You can Google us. Uh, just make sure that you're connected so that you can be aware of the things that are going in to help you as the consumer. So let's go back to the article and see what else it has to say. Okay, find an, find agent. an agent. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> most sellers list their homes through an agent, but those agents work for the seller, not you. Um, they're paid based on a percentage, usually five to 7% of the purchase price. Um, usually uh, it can be around 3% as well. Um, so uh, their interest will be uh, in getting you to pay more. Um, the, all of these things uh, break down in the end. So uh, <laughs> it's a particular process. Isn't uh, they all break down in the end? You need, exclusive buy, you need an exclusive buyer agent. Sometimes buyer agents are paid directly by you on an hourly or contractable fee. Other times they split the commission that the seller's agent gets upon the sale. A buyer's representative has the same uh, access uh, to homes for sale that the seller's agent does, but he or her allegiance is supposed to be only to you. So and, it, uh, it, it, I was going to say this is true, but you want to make sure if you are buying a home that you get a buyer's representative uh, agreement signed with that uh, particular agent to make sure that they're working specifically for you and uh, that uh, all of your interests are coming into play. And those uh, usually don't cost anything. You can uh, be able to have uh, your agent searching for you and it can be a couple month agreement. Um, mm -hmm. up to a particular time period uh, where you are looking and uh, you're just in agreement to use them. So you just basically um, are uh, linked with them and give them a call whenever you have questions and uh, whenever you find properties and uh, they can look out for you. Yes. It's a good idea to be safe. Absolutely. So again, 
it's important to be educated so you know what you can do and you know what you you know what possibilities exist for you through the the assistance that's that's out there so um we're gonna we have five more to do so we're gonna go through these pretty quick um search for a home we've said that so you need uh, a real estate agent to help you with that process sometimes you can go around looking for your own home and things like that but you can't get in it you, you're going to need an, a, a real estate agent to help you here make an offer and so that is why it's so important to also have a realtor uh working with mm -hmm. you so they can advise you on you know what is uh, the going rate in that area for that particular uh home they can do a, a comparative market analysis um I know uh, I do that uh, for different homes that are in the area, and this is for buying or if you're looking to sell your home. Um, it's very important to be aware of what other comparables in the uh, in marketplace the market. mm -hmm. have, what they've been selling for, what they're being currently listed at, and uh, just to uh, um, know exactly what you're working with and to be able to uh, play out a, a fair story within uh, giving your author offer and everything. Uh, making sure that it's going to be a strong offer and uh, being uh, prepared to go in with uh, negotiations and yes. that's where your realtor comes in so you don't have to uh, worry but uh, make sure that you get someone that you can trust and that uh, that it's uh, going to be a, a good uh, process for you so okay so let's go to the the last few listed here in uh, enter a contract have your lawyer or buyer agent review the document to make sure the deal is contingent upon your obtaining a mortgage, home inspection that shows no significant defects, uh, guarantees that you may conduct a walkthrough inspection 24 hours before closing. You also need to make a good faith deposit. So, and then number eight, it says secure loan. You know, unless you've yes. got a lot of cash sitting in your pocket where you're going to write a check for this home purchase, <laughs> which is not likely in most circumstances. Most people acquire a loan to take care of it. And so you've got to find a lender who will be mm -hmm. willing to extend that loan to you. Yes. Exactly. And they're going to pull credit, too. <laughs> so everybody's pulling credit. And mm -hmm. now, isn't it true in the home buying process, isn't the credit pull more than once? Uh, but, well, uh, it uh, is particularly with uh, all these different lenders around town. There are so many different options uh, with the lenders. There are a lot of different people that can assist you with this process. And... Um, when uh, you are working, I believe that it, it is pulled uh, each time that uh, you are filing uh, to be able to uh, get uh, a loan uh, with these different uh, individuals. So uh, just uh, be prepared that uh, all this will happen. And uh, don't uh, worry. A lot of people uh, apply in, in order to get a home or uh, they are curious to see exactly how much uh, home they, they can afford. Get, yes. So uh, don't uh, let this concern you or anything. Uh, this is all a part of the, of the uh, process. Of the process. Yes. So yes. don't worry. So let's go to there the last to two. Uh, number nine, get an inspection. You want to make sure that what you're buying is what you're buying. Uh, you want to make sure, uh, ask to be present during the inspection because you will learn a lot about the house, including... Uh, it's overall condition. So you want to make sure that you're buying something that's uh, worth the money that you've you've put out. So these are safeguards to help protect the, the buyer. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you've got to close. Close the deal. About two days before the actual closing, you will receive a final HUD settlement statement uh, from your lender that uh, lists all the charges that you can expect to pay at closing. And so these are 10 quick, easy steps, but these are things that we're going to go through in our workshop, which is going to be November the 11th. So make sure you mark the date on that. And you want to be participant in that. If you've never purchased a home, you don't understand the process. All of these things are going to be covered in that workshop. So I encourage you to look out for it and make sure that you are a participant. Okay. And so we've had an incredible show. I want to thank you so much, Sandra, for being here. Thank you. Uh, you guys will see a lot of her. Um, Please give your contact information one more time, email and okay. phone. Um, my email address is slschrenk at gmail.com. And my phone number is 713-410-4049. Yes, and, awesome. And uh, you can contact me at any time. If you have uh, any questions or anything, uh, I can uh, refer you to others if uh, uh, anything is not uh, within uh, my playing field. So thank yes. you so much. I appreciate so you that's, for this that's time. That's awesome. Of course, you guys know you can contact us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. 
Uh, also, my name is LaShonda Johnson. You can contact me at LaShonda J at Houston Housewives of Finance dot uh, com. And also you can contact us at one 800 4463 for any information about anything that we've discussed here today on the show. So we will see you next time. Same place, same time right here on The Spear. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.